Hi there, my name is Frank Flegg, I'm founder of Ethical Property Partners. We specialise in helping property investors to take their investing to the next level and to build their sophisticated property investing business. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the three magic questions that will just open up vendors to telling you exactly how you can help them. In sophisticated property investing, the biggest obstacle that I come across is people trying to solve a vendor's problem, trying to come up with the solution to their problem, trying to close the deal before they even understand why the vendor has approached them in the first place. Now, we can't blame vendors for this. We have to take responsibility for it. We have to ask the right questions. And most vendors, if you think about it, only have one thing in their head. All they want to do is they want to sell their property and to get as much for it as possible. They have like one solution. My karate teacher, when I was a kid, he used to tell us that in a fight on the street, the assailant that might be attacking you has only got one idea in his head. All he wants to do is, is punch you. We as martial artists, he used to say, have to have loads of solutions. Are we gonna step backwards? Are we gonna step to the side? Are we gonna jump inside and and uh, and kick him? Or what are we gonna do as a, as a defense? And he said, if you've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 things in your head, you can't fail but defend yourself. You can't fail but win the fight. And that's how I think we should be, <laughs> we're not gonna fight with our vendors, but I do think that's how we should be approaching our interactions with our vendors. They have one path in mind. They don't know any better. They don't know the 61 strategies we use in order to be sophisticated property investors. And that's fine, they don't need to know them. But we have to know them and we have to be sifting through them and working out the best strategies for them whilst we're talking to them. And so if you fall into the trap of trying to answer the one question they have, how much are you gonna give me for my property, you're probably not gonna solve their problem. You probably don't even know their problem if that's how you're trying to solve it. What three questions can you ask a vendor to understand their true motivation behind why they've contacted you? So the first question, which is the one I use most often, is how can I help? If someone's phoned me and said, I'm interested in selling my house, I go, absolutely. How can I help Fred? And sometimes they say, well, I wanna sell my house. And you had an advert for selling your house and it's a little bit awkward, but that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with a bit of awkwardness. 90% of cases say, well, let me explain. 12 months ago this happened and then we went into lockdown and then this happened and this happened. My business changed, my relationship changed. I've now got more money, I've now got less money, I've got this opportunity in business, blah, 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 blah. And they'll talk for five or 10 minutes about their situation. And that whole time I'm just taking it in. I used to write it all down, I can take it in now because I've done literally thousands of these telephone fact find calls. But they tell me what their situation is. I might ask a few questions. I might say, oh, okay, so that opportunity, I spoke to a gentleman yesterday morning, actually, yesterday afternoon. And um, he was, uh, he'd had to come back from Spain because he could no longer stay in Spain because he wasn't a resident. He'd actually opened a new business here and the business had had to close because his um, premises weren't conducive to social distancing. And he's got a portfolio of five properties that he wants to sell and liquidate. And so in him telling me that whole story, he probably spoke for 10 minutes, I already have discounted 40 or 50 different strategies. And I'm now focused in on the, the five that are most likely to work for him and the other five that may work for him. So my questioning gets even better. Now I'm not gonna go into the other questions you ask, but the first question of how can I help is massive. The second question that I like to ask, and I won't necessarily ask all of these, is if I had a magic wand and we could just fix your solution right now, fix your problem right now, what would the solution look like? What's the perfect solution to your situation right now? And then they tell you, well, I could do with 100 grand now. I don't mind when I get the other 200 grand. Um, I'd like market value for my property, it's 300 grand. And I really want to be overseas in the next six weeks time. So if we could solve all that, I'd be over the moon. Well, straight away and go, right, all those strategies aren't going to work. These strategies here, these might work. So let's start asking us some questions about that. That's a brilliant question to ask. The final question that I like to ask is, 
after you've sold these properties, and it sounds as though we'll be able to do a deal, sounds as though we'll be able to help you, which is fantastic. After you've sold these properties, what will you be doing with the money? What's your plan? Because that, ladies and gents, opens up all of the strategies to you. If they say, well, I'm just gonna put it in the bank and probably live off the interest. Have a listen to my um, recent episode on raising private finance from private individuals, not going to a bank, not going to a bridging provider. And you'll realize why a person with cash putting it in the bank is actually not gonna be very happy for very long at all. And so if that's what someone's gonna do with the money, why give them the money at all? We could give them a 5% return very easily by making them a vendor financier. And so they can become the mortgage lender and then we don't have to go get a mortgage. What is the point of us getting a mortgage and paying 5% on the mortgage, giving the money to them and them giving the money to the same bank perhaps and getting a 0.1% interest rate? The bank's just making an absolute killing. Plus we've got to jump through all their hoops, plus we've got to go put a 25% deposit in, etc. How about we just cut out the middleman and do the deal direct with the vendor? The vendor lends us 100% of the purchase price, fantastic, and we pay them because that's all they're getting anyway. They're getting 100% of the purchase price and putting it in the bank and getting 0.1%. So they put 100% of the purchase price in, it's equity anyway, and we give them 5% interest on the purchase price. And now we've got a no money down deal Fantastic, we're making cash flow off that deal every single month, and the vendor is getting 5% rather than 0.1%. That's only possible if I understand what the vendor's gonna do with the money afterwards. Now, if the vendor wants to go buy another property, if it's a cheaper property, perhaps they don't need all the money. If it's a more expensive property, maybe they need all the money. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't need the money at all. Many people will buy their next house and not need any money from this one but it's our preconditioning, it's our expectations that everyone needs the money now, but they often don't, and you won't know unless you ask that question. Guys, if you've enjoyed this episode and you'd like more sophisticated property investing tips and tricks, then hit the subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and each and every time we upload an episode, you'll be notified first so that you can start employing these SPI strategies in your own portfolios, in your own property businesses, and you will start profiting from them before everyone else. Until our next episode, happy investing.